Well, hello all you movie lovers out there. This is part two of my 25 part series I'm calling 25 Groovy Flicks. That's where I talk about a movie in a completely biased way. Now these aren't necessarily the best films ever made, but they're the ones that I enjoy watching. And as my wife can tell you, I watch them over and over again. You know, I might be watching one of these and she'll walk into the room, roll her eyes up into the back of her head and turn around and leave without saying a word. But anyway, what film am I talking about today? Hmm, now where did I put that? Oh, here it is. Run Lola Run from 1998. It's number two in my 25 movie flicks. Old Man Kelly here, Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. So, Run Lola Run is a very stylish German experimental film, and um, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a German film with subtitles, and I, and I know subtitles scare a lot of people. I personally know people who won't watch a film that has subtitles. Now, on the DVD, you can watch an overdubbed version, and I've tried watching it, and it's awful, almost laughable. So, hey, don't do it. This is the third film written and directed by German director, producer, screenwriter, and composer Tom Teichweer. Tom recently co-directed Cloud Atlas with the Wachowskis. The film stars Franca Potente as Lola, and it's the story of her and her boyfriend Manny, played by Moritz Babtroy, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I don't speak German. It begins with Manny calling Lola on the phone and telling her that he's lost a large amount of money that he was delivering to some bad guys. He panicked on the subway and left the bag of cash behind. Now he has a short amount of time, about 20 minutes, to replace the cash before the mob arrives. If he doesn't have the money, he will surely be killed. Lola goes on a fast-paced quest to get the money to save her boyfriend's life. Now the film, the way I see it, is all about timing, how a few moments here and there can make all the difference in the world. The smallest little thing can have enormous consequences. You see, this is the same story done three times over. Lola leaves her apartment at slightly different moments, and this changes the whole series of events, not just for her, but from those she encounters on the way, those that she bumps into while running. Now, I'm probably doing a very poor job of explaining this, so why don't we watch the trailer? Did that help? Hmm. Now this film touches on themes such as free will versus determinism, the role of chance in people's destiny, and obscure cause-effect relationships. I got that all off Wikipedia, but it does sum it up pretty well, though a voiceover narrator tells us pretty much that at the beginning of the film. But I don't know about that because events in the first story seem to affect events in the second story. Like in the first story, Lola has no idea how to use a gun and she has to be shown, but in the second story, she knows exactly how to use a gun. So, who knows? Maybe it's a parallel universe thing or whatever. But all of that means nothing to me. I really don't care about meanings or messages or themes in films. I judge a film by how much I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed Run, Lola, Run a lot, even with its techno soundtrack. At least that's what I call it. You younger kids can correct me. In general, I'm not a fan of this style of music, but it does work really well in this film. 
There's a lot of repetition and rhythm that seems to mimic the way Lola is feeling, the panic, anxiety, turmoil. The film was edited in a fast frenzy pace. According to IMDB Trivia, the film contains 1,581 transitions, like edits, dissolves, fades, wipes, etc., in its 81 minutes. That's an average shot length of 2.7 seconds. That seems right. I'm not going to count it myself. The film was nominated for dozens of awards, including a BAFTA for Best Film Not in the English Language. It also won the Audience Award at the Sundance Film Festival, Best Film at the Seattle International Film Festival, and a few others. Now, the reviews were mostly positive. It's got a 90% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, which is pretty damn good. Stephen G. gave it 5 out of 5 stars and wrote, Amazing! I loved it ever since I first saw it as a teenager. Amazing story, characters, acting, soundtrack, everything. And almost all the reviews gave it 4 out of 5 stars or better, but this film was definitely not for everyone. Scott S. gave it only a half star, and he wrote, I love indie films. I love artsy films, and I love foreign films. I hated this movie. I made it through 20 minutes and shut it off. On top of it being crap, it was dubbed in English, and I hate dubbed movies. Give me subtitles. It tried to be artsy for art's sake and forgot that a movie needs at least some story. Maybe that's the problem. You watch the dubbed version, Scott. I want to stress to everybody, don't watch the dubbed version. Find a subtitled version. You'll be a lot happier. And why the half star, Scott? Can't you even give it zero or one? Half just seems so wishy-washy. You have zero through five to choose from. Just you know, be a little more decisive. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This film is sort of gimmicky. It's definitely a product of the 90s. Tykeweer uses every trick in the book. But it's a short 81 minutes, and which is about the perfect length for a film like this. So, you know. And the bottom line is, I like this movie, and if you want to be cool like me, you'll watch it and appreciate it. Now, if you don't like Run, Lola, Run, well, you know, I, I'll, I'm fine with that, too. It's... It's fine not to like a movie. Anyway, I'll be back soon with uh, the third film in my 25 groovy flicks. Thanks for watching. You're the best. Bye.